see every one of you here this morning. Thank you for being here. Y'all still love the Lord? Amen. 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 How about we just give him a hand clap of praise? If I read the Bible correctly, we are the body of Christ. He is the head, we are the body. We win. Amen. He already said you're more than a conqueror. That means if you need a, a 10, he's going to put a 12 on you. That's more than. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're going to pass out in the middle of this deal. You're going to endure. You're going straight through. We read a scripture this morning that said you'll go through the fire and you won't be burned. You come out the other side, you don't smell like smoke. Y'all yeah. with me? Happy Father's Day. Yes. I say Happy Father's Day. Yes. Thank God for all the fathers, committed fathers, in the world today. Amen. And you know what? You're special to God. Because mm -hmm. there's plenty in the scriptures that touches on this. Amen. How many of y'all ever sat down and watched a movie? It's kind of lengthy. Called Lonesome Dove. Oh boy. I don't know. I did. Yeah. Say, were well, you back slid preaching? Well, if I can't watch Lonesome Dove, I'm going to have to quit my job tomorrow. Because <laughs> there's a lot, stuff, a lot worse stuff at the workplace <laughs> than Lonesome Dove. But as I was standing there this morning, a part of that movie, one of my favorite parts. Tommy Lee Jones had an illegitimate son in there named Newt. He was young, but Tommy Lee Jones comes out of the store with Robert Duvall, and he looks down there, and this old army sergeant is going to try to make himself a horses, and he's just bewailing, smacking him in the face with this leather and he comes unglued. He goes down there, and when he gets done with that old army sergeant, there wasn't much left of it. And he stood and he said, I, I won't tolerate rude behavior in a man. And, you know, to me it just, it kind of struck a chord, but I thought, don't, you don't mess with the dedicated father's children. Because you'll see something go off that you would like, whoa, where'd that come from? Yeah. And that's the love of a father for their children. You know, I, I was, my real father, I never laid eyes on. He, he passed when my mother was four or five months pregnant, not, not exactly. Died a young man in a, a train run over him. He was 25 years old. But, uh, and you know, I don't believe in coincidence, but little Corbin, my first grandchild, was born on his birthday. But, uh, had a stepfather. He, he was good to me, but he passed away when I was 12. And there was a lot of that. I just didn't. When I, when I look at other people and they, they hug their daddy, I always just had to stand at a distance and, and watch. And I thought, devil. He stole that from me, you know. I'm trying. I'm trying to be led by the Spirit of God. He plays for keeps. Right. I'm going to tell you about the devil. He plays for keeps. Amen. But I wish this building was full this morning of young men that had not got married yet, that had not had children yet. Because there's no perfect daddy. But oh, how much better you can be. When you got Jesus in your life. Y'all with me, church? 
Thank God for dedicated fathers. Yes. Father's Day 2018. Y'all want to read a few verses of Scripture? Y'all bring the Bible with you? You know, can I pass a little word of knowledge on to y'all? Y'all think I'm being serious now. Here's a word of knowledge. You won't need any long johns next week. <laughs> That's from the Holy Ghost. Y'all can put them up. Turn, if you would, to Ephesians 6. We live in a country that has many, many, many fatherless homes. And, and you can get by. I mean, you, you can survive. But it has to affect the society that we live in. And you know, with, with myself, I mean, I, I didn't know a whole lot about being a daddy how to be a daddy. Didn't, didn't see a lot of that. And I, you know, just try to do the best you can. But one thing you've done in me, I'm going to be one. I don't want to go through or I don't want my children to go through some of the stuff I had to go through. And it, but, but I look and I see people that in similar situation and, and they're not it didn't, it didn't move them that way. It's like the, the another generation of the same thing. And, uh, and if you look back, it's been going on for a while. I'm going to tell you something. And, and this ain't about me. It's about God in me. Amen. And, and, and what I want to touch on a little bit this morning is, if you don't have a, a, a relationship with God, it's going to be hard for you to be a good daddy. It's going to be hard for you to make the right decisions, to make the right choices. No, you won't be perfect, but I'm here to tell you, with God's help, uh, with God all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who loves me, who strengthens me. And I'm here to tell you, church, we need a nation full of committed men that would make up their mind. Uh, come on, church. That would make up their mind. I'm going to be a daddy to my children. Can we read a little verse there? Ephesians 6. You know, I'm not going to share anything new with you today. But I, I had a pastor years ago, and he would often say, repetition is the key to memory. And there's times when we, we, we go a while uh, without hearing something or practicing something or doing something and on your job, maybe. And you got to get out something and, and get a little refresher course. Uh, you know, it just, well, it's been a while since I've done this. And, uh, you know, we, we need a little tune-up, you might say. And it's good for us to hear from time to time these verses of Scripture along this line. Y'all with me? Because I'm telling you, kids don't raise themselves. Oh, I'm trying, Lord. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to preach the truth and not offend people. But when you, when you buy all these devices, electronic devices, and then you want to set them down, uh, and, 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 and that becomes your babysitter, and next thing you know, they got an, uh, you might as well say an addiction to that. Uh, there's some grown folks addicted to their phone. Uh, there, there's been times I walk by, it just might, y'all need to pray for me, it's my nature. But I just want to take somebody's phone and sling it out in the out cornfield or something. Because you get tired. I, I went to the lumber shed, and this guy, he plays his cards. He's walking across the parking lot, you know. Uh, I'm going to tell you, when, when you begin to let things like that raise your children and babysit your children, you're setting yourself up for some heartache down the road. Come on, church. I, I'm just preaching the truth now. Kids don't raise their self. As a matter of fact, they come unprogrammed. And you got to fill them up. 
If you don't fill them up, somebody else is going to fill them up. And you got to watch what they fill up on. You know, you see people say, now, uh, don't ruin your supper. You know, don't eat that whole box of Twinkies. I do. Let me get hungry. I ate a whole box of Twinkies. <laughs> you watch what goes in. And I'm telling you, uh, I, I, I wish, you know, I know I'm forgiven. I know I'm redeemed. But I, 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 I say wish. I, I just would like to have not been exposed to certain things as I was growing up. Because it could have prevented me from a lot of heartache down the road. It could have prevented me from a lot of unlearning down the road. And it's very important that you watch what your, ch your children are taking in. Amen. Mainly being you, Daddy. Because they're looking at you. They want to be like you. Amen. You ever notice in family situations where... Children aren't treated the best, and he, he, he may not be around, and they still love daddy to death. It, it, it puzzles me. You know, he's, he's really been kind of abusive to you. He's been kind of mean to you. He's not provided for you, and you walk across the bed of nails and hot coals, just spend time with him. It's called natural affection. It's in the Bible. Natural affection. And, oh, what a terrible thing when that is mistreated and abused by the men of this country that we live in today. Y'all with me? You know, I've said it before, but if, if I was a judge and these dead big daddies come before me, you wouldn't like me. I say glory, hallelujah, but you wouldn't like me. Because here's what the Bible does say. i got to preach the truth. Y'all may not sit up here and lie to y'all preach the truth about God's word. It says, if a man will not provide for his own, he's worse than infidel. We're going to tear that one out? Huh? They probably do tear him out of the jailhouse, rolling up a cigarette with it. Y'all think that stuff don't go on? Happy Father's Day. I'm not here this morning to make anybody feel bad. But I'm telling you, if we want our nation to have a turnaround, we're going to have to have healthy homes. We're going to have to have people with the right mindset. And it's going to take the men of this country being fathers. Let's read that verse. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Children, we're going to start off with the honor. Because I'm going to tell you, fathers deserve honor. Amen. These men that gave their life for their children, it's, it's hard to... Uh, it's, it's hard to know what a man goes through unless you've been there. But they, they, they give their life. If you work outside, you fight the elements. And, and after years and years, and, and, and you sacrifice, and, and you give, and you raise, and you nurture, that's, that's a big price that's been paid. Amen? And rightly so, children are worth it. But I'm going to tell you. And then, and then they come home and they, uh, you know, you set the example and you protect and you, uh, you, you love your wife and, and all this, you know, biblical stuff that goes on. Uh, fathers deserve a great position of honor. Amen. Amen. God has a plan. God has a perfect plan. And I'm telling you right now, it starts with, I've always said this, what's a good church? It's a bunch of good families coming together. And you show me a church that's always got turmoil and uh, bitterness and uproar, all it amounts 
to is you got a bunch of dysfunctional families coming together and trying to put the name of God over that thing. Boy, I'm about to preach this morning. <laughs> we need counseling. No, we don't need counseling. No. We need to get down at the foot of the cross. So we need to get down at these altars and get some stuff under the blood of Jesus and put our pride behind ourselves and start letting God be God and getting biblical in every area of our life. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. What's the right thing to do? It'd never be the right thing to do to cuss out your daddy. Y'all think that don't happen? Oh, I've seen some parents get treated terrible. It'd never be the right thing to do to attack your parent. It said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The right thing to do is always that parent is your authoritative person in your life. And you may not understand why they say no or why they say do this, but you obey them in the Lord. For this is right. It may be years down the road. And you'll look back one day and you'll say, you know what? Daddy has some stuff figured out. I thought I had it all figured out. I thought I knew more than Daddy. I, th I, thought, I, I thought he was just an old fogey that was, you know, not quite up to par. But looking back now, boy, he had some stuff figured out. And he had my best interest at heart. I mean, if you can look back and say that right now, that is such a blessing. Because you can't buy that. You, you, I mean, there's no way you can go out and get you a, a bucket load of that. But if, if you had the privilege of being raised in a home with a good, godly father, oh my, 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 my! You need to you, you need to really thank God on a daily basis for having such a blessing. Amen. Amen. Children, obey your parents. Honor your parents. Verse two says, "Honor thy father and mother." First commandment with promise. That's what the Bible says. I think, well, I'm not learning the Bible. I've heard that about all I can stand. I think the next time somebody tells me they're not learning the law, I'm going to come unglued. Y'all might need to lay hands on me before I get out of here this morning. I'm not under the law. I'm going to cuss out daddy. Does that, does that make any sense? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, that that is not at all what that's you know when you hear people they misuse that term. We are still obligated to honor our father and honor our mother, and it is still the first commandment with a promise. Y'all with me? And and if you study that out, here's what that promise consists of: you'll have a long life, and while you're here on this side. You can walk in the blessings of God. Don't tell me how spiritual you are and you treat your parents like something else. Don't go. It don't go. Y'all still want me to finish this? I'm enjoying it. It's not bothering me a bit. It's not bothering me a bit. Here's how this starts. We have a lot of men who make babies. Y'all believe that? And that that don't make you a father. That just makes you 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 had a child. Yes, that's your child, but that don't make you a father. There's a difference. Are y'all with me? A father's one that loves their children. A father's one that provides for their children. And, and you know what? Uh, let's just say, well, uh, th this is a heads up for anybody that has yet to have a family. And when you find yourself with a family, you don't have to continue doing what you've been doing. 
You can change the situation. You can turn this around. Just because you fell and got muddy yesterday, don't make you go, go get you some different clothes on. Go get in that shower and clean yourself up. Uh, that, that's not your destiny. That's not where you're going to stay at the rest of your life. You can get up and get God by the hand and you can turn this thing around for the better. Are y'all with me? But God has a plan that, and it's not that people go out and make a bunch of babies, but he first wants us to find the love of our life. If, if you're a man, he don't want you out on another man. You need to rebuke that devil. Huh? That's not God. That's not the Spirit leading you. You need to find you the woman. Uh, when he made Adam, then he created a woman named Eve, and they came together. That was the love of his life. That was his the one, that was the only one that was right for him. And I'm telling you, men need to get where they start uh, quit being in such a hurry and, 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 and slow down a little bit and get the right one that God has chosen for you before you ever start having any kids. Boy, that's a little old-fashioned. I guess that's what I am. I'm a little bit old school. Because the Bible... Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. This stuff's not changing. What's changing is the perverted world that we live in. And we see it going down, down, down. Amen. Look what goes on in the public schools today. I mean, just every area of society. Take you a close look. And uh, it's not going up, but it's headed south, church. Uh, and the only thing that's going to turn this situation around is when we begin to walk with God. Thank God for the fathers. Amen. Ephesians 5. You already there? Just back up a little. Verse 25 says, Husbands, husbands, huh? Husbands. Not every man's a husband. You know how everybody wants a trophy now? Well, winners get trophies. I had a we went to a little deal yesterday, and my performance was not worthy of a trophy. But I'm all right today. You know? I'm not going to go cry to my mom and say, they didn't give me a trophy. Now, Brother Ashley back there was deserving of a trophy. I'm not jealous or envious. I'm glad for him. Everybody is not what you might say deserving of a trophy. I'm not talking about people, but I'm just saying this is the truth. And society nowadays just wants to lump everybody in the same category. Everybody's not a husband. Here's what a husband is. A husband is one that finds the love of his life, that finds the, the his help meet, the Bible calls it, you know, that one that is going to be with him forevermore. And he makes a commitment. To, I mean, just like the marriage vow say. You got to get married before you're going to be a husband. And this is God's plan before you ever have children. Does things ever get messed up? Oh, they get messed up all the time. And God can fix it when we get things out of order. But I'm just saying, it can be better if we would begin to do it like God wants it done. Amen. A husband's one that makes a commitment. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. Now they come in there, Donnie. You want to sign this prenup? You know what I mean? Huh? You, I'll marry you, baby, but you want you need to sign a little prenup right there. So, you know, in case this don't work, you know, I got a way out. And you know, uh, you, you could have the church believing in prenups now. I'm just gonna be truthful with you. Uh, what are you thinking about failure down the road for if that's the one God has for you and you, you're making you a commitment to be a husband? you already getting off on shaky ground. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Uh, and whenever you start building on all this other shifting sand, that's what you can expect because there's a storm coming down the road, husbands. There's a storm coming down the road, daddy. And I can promise you this, if you're not rock solid built on Jesus Christ and, and his words and his teachings, uh, great will be the fall of that house. Well, I didn't plan on preaching like that this morning, but y'all's doing all right. This is some good stuff. I didn't get my trophy. I might have to go see Dr. Phil.
Not everybody's going to the Olympics. You might go, but you're wasting your time. <laughs> I'm trying. I know y'all love me. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. See, before you ever have kids, best thing to do is get all this figured out. Huh? If you're blacking her eyes, you don't need no children. If you're cussing her out and throwing stuff at her, y'all don't need no children. Because you don't love your wife. I ain't never hit myself in the face. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. But I have never, I've got mad at myself. But I've never just hauled off and just took, took a piece of wood or something and just cracked myself over the top of the head. I've never done that. And I'm going to tell you something. If you love your wife, you're not going to abuse her. Amen. You're not going to be mean to her. Right. You're not going to cuss her out. You're not, going, you're not going to be forceful to her. You're going to let her be an individual. <laughs> you're going to let her be herself. You're not going to try to make her. I'm trying to preach Father's Day, but I, I can't get much further. People say, well, she don't pull her away. Here, here's how this goes. It's not 50-50. Huh? I'm going to give you half the bills, baby. And I'll take good half. It's 100-100. And when, 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 when a man and a woman come together and they love each other and they get married and, and they just, each one does all that they can do and don't be a scorekeeper, huh? Oh, man, it's your turn to bat. That is a miserable life. It, it, I know people that live by this code. Uh, I, no, I'm not buying that soda pop. It's your turn. Them are miserable people. Amen. I'm trying to get back on this. I'm just trying to help folks not to be so unhappy. And it's not your neighbor's problem. It's not your spouse's problem. It's a heart problem. Amen. And when you get right with God, that stuff will disappear. Uh, he said, love your wives as Christ also loved the church. Hmm. Now, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm getting this right, oh, we're not going to get too far, but we'll be all right. There's times in my life when I have to come, Brother Galen, and I say, Jesus, it's me again. And I messed up. Amen. Yeah. My wife put a gun on me. No. It's me again, and I have blew it, and I need your mercy. I, I, I need you to forgive me. I'm sorry, I, and, and I didn't plan on this, but it, I, I need you. That's how he loved the church. He gave himself for it so that we could do that. The reason he gave himself is so that you can do what I just said. However, now, boy, I'm playing full thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shalom, Akala whatever. And then you have a little spat there in the house and you got all against your wife. Huh? Yeah, you're not forgiving her. But did he not forgive you? Did he not say in his word come boldly, come with confidence when, when you're in need, when you need grace? Uh, yeah, where grace did abound, you know, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. That's what that's talking about. This is what takes care of sin and faults and failures. However, there are many husbands that don't forgive the wife. You got to get all this stuff lined out. Why? This is why the divorce rate is so high. Because people are not biblical when they come into a marriage. And you look at folks and you say, man, I, you've been married 50 years? That's not me, I'm only 52. But you've been married 50 years? How'd you do it, God? The Word. You ever got mad? Well, sure. I mean, you know, we know, I about run off the road or get on the way over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. But you know what? I, I, it's not like a, you're disposable. 
your keeper. Your keeper. And what you got to do is find your keeper and stay together. And in the midst of whatever happens, that, that's not even an option. Well, I'll just divorce you. That, that's not even an option. That, that's not even in, in the spirit of people who are biblical. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Two Christians aren't getting divorced. Why well, about shouting? I should have just did it anyway. There's stuff goes on in the church that shouldn't be going on. Hmm? Somewhere down the road, somebody's going to have to admit I was wrong. I was backslid. Somebody's going to have to stop and get some stuff under the blood if they want to get back on track and get on that straight and narrow. Thank God for the fathers. Y'all with me? Fathers are an example to their children. Yeah. Uh, whatever you see your father do, the more likely you'll do it. So when you sleep and you're dumb and let out a few little words, and I'm not talking about speaking in tongues, and then you look over and that four-year-old, he, he does something. I, I noticed there's some young kids, they know how to cuss correctly. I mean, they don't just randomly let it out. They put it in a sentence where it should be. You, you're pretty experienced, little fella. How'd that happen? They see your daddy do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we was on a job one time, and uh, this little guy, he's growing now, it's been a long time ago, but he had some of that Mike's hard lemonade. He done worked that open and killed one of them. How come? Because he seen daddy doing it. Yeah. This goes two directions. And what you want to do, fathers, is be positive. Yeah. Because nobody wants to see their child grow up and be an alcoholic, a drug addict. They don't want to see them grow up and, and treat their children terrible. They, they want, people want to see their children grow up and be an asset to society. Amen. Amen. A, a father would love to go out and about in public and say, man, we just appreciate your daughter or we appreciate your son or you, you done a, you done a, you done a good job raising them. I'm telling you because they just, they're, they're just good people. Uh, that's what people want. Not to say they're down there in the penitentiary or, or you know, whatever the case may be. They're, they're part of a, a, a violent gang or, you know, just, there's so many different places people can wind up where a parent would say, man, I sure never wanted that to happen. And a lot of this starts with the fathers doing as they should. Amen. Can I read a verse to you in Jeremiah? I'm going to skip a few. But talking about bad examples. And as I said, today is the day of salvation. His mercy is renewed every day. Whatever you're, whatever you're doing in front of your children or your grandchildren, you know. Uh, I've heard of grandchildren, they go to this, this one and it's not okay to cuss, but they go to this one and it's okay to cuss. And they figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. Just fit in and, and you know, shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 14. Bad examples have an effect on the next generation. And you ever notice it doesn't just stay even. When you plant something, you get more. Why do you think people farm? Uh, for every seed of corn I put in the ground, I get that seed back, back corn back. Well, that's foolish. If all you're doing is breaking even, why do you farm? Because they don't, okay? And whenever something goes forth, if you sow the wind, you're going to reap the whirlwind. That's what the Bible says. And it just gets worse 
and worse and worse. Let me share this verse with you. Jeremiah 9 verse 14. But have walked after the imagination of their own heart. Everybody has that possibility. Everybody has that potential. If you turn away from God, you will walk after the imagination of your own heart. And there's no telling what you'll justify. There's no telling what you'll feel good about. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Because you have no guidance. You have no boundaries. Amen. Amen. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. And after Balaam, false gods. Amen. There, there's, there's, some, there's some kind of counterfeit out there that wants to lure you in and try to fill that void that the people have because you were made to have a relationship with God. That's what was going on here. But look, which their fathers taught them. You see that? How'd they get there? And what it amounted to was judgment's about to fall. God's merciful and, and, and God's patient and he, 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 he works with people. But I'm telling you, there comes a time with God when he says, enough's enough. Judgment's about to fall. This day of grace is about to close. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been lenient. Uh, Bible said he once winked on ignorance, you know. And, and, and there's so many things in the Word of God that, that do this. But their fathers taught them what they were doing. And that's exactly why this country is in the shape that it's in. A lot to do with it. Amen. Because men who could have been a good example, a good father, they dropped the ball. They didn't do what they should have done. And it's had an impact. It's had an effect. And I'm just saying, how about we do our part? Raise your kids up in church. What's wrong with that? Well, they're not going to love church if you don't. I said, they're not going to love church if you don't. And the bottom line is this. What do we do at church? We're here to work out. If you love the Lord, if you love Jesus Christ, it says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And if you love the Lord in a healthy way, not just in a gimme, 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 First Security State Bank, that can be a love. Huh? Man, I love Jesus because he puts food on my table. He puts tires on my car. You know, uh, that, hey, you want to get for real about it, you, you can say that kind of love for a prostitute. You know what I'm saying? But when you get genuine about it, and when you get sincere about it, and, and, and you you really see what he's done for you and the debt that he paid and what awaits you in glory. This world's not our home, church. But when you really fall in love with him, you're going to love this word and you're going to love together together with people.